Hello guys, my name is Mark and for today's video, we'll be talking about 3 hinge arc. So what is a 3 hinge arc? A 3 hinge arc is a structural member consists of a curved beam supported by two external hinges and an internal hinge at its crown. The two external hinges are the supports that absorb horizontal and vertical forces, while the crown hinge renders the system statically determinate making the analysis of a 3-hinge arc fairly easy. There are generally two types of 3-hinge arc that you will encounter as we go along on this topic. We have the one with its external hinges lie on the same level and the other one where its external hinges does not lie on the same level. Okay, let's talk about this one first. Now, when we analyze 3-hinge arc or any structure for that matter, we always try to solve first for the reaction that it supports. And in this process, since the 3 hinge arc is a statically determinate structure, you will only need the static equilibrium equations. And these are, the summation of forces along x should be equal to 0, the summation of forces along y should also be equal to 0, and of course, the summation of moment at any point should also be equal to 0. Okay, let's consider this example. Suppose we are given with a 3-hinge arc whose external supports lie on the same elevation, subjected to a uniformly distributed load with a magnitude of, say, 10 kN per meter, and with the following dimensions. What we need to do first is to draw the free body diagram. It is basically an illustration or a diagram that shows all the forces acting on a body. And this includes all reactive forces. This means that you need to anticipate how certain supports would react. And since obviously all supports are hinges, that means that we'll only be dealing with reactive forces along the x and y directions. Taking the whole structure, the free body diagram would look like this. Now, remember that all applied forces should be included. And as for the supports, reactive forces will be along x and y axis. At point A, we have RAX and RAY, and at point B, we have RBX and RBY. Now remember that the direction of these forces are just assumed. It doesn't really matter which direction you assume it to be, as long as it's along the X and Y axis, because it will not affect the numerical value of the result. We also have the free body diagram for each member of this structure. For member AC, we have this diagram. At point C, which is an internal hinge, we have RCX and RCY. And remember that RCX and RCY can also be found in member BC, but it will have the opposite direction as assumed in member AC, following the Newton's third law of motion. So these are the free body diagram we need to fully analyze this three hinge arc. Again, we have the free body diagram for the whole structure, and the free body diagram for each member of the structure. Now, using the free body diagram for the whole structure, we will solve for the value of RAY and RBY. We will use the static equilibrium equation, the summation moment at any point should always be equal to zero. Now, summing the moment at point B, which should be equal to zero, we'll take the clockwise moment as the positive moment, we'll have positive RAY times 6 minus 10, the magnitude of the uniformly distributed load times 6 times 3 equals to 0. Now solving for the value of RAY will have the result equal to 30 kN. Now summing the moment at point A, which should be also equal to 0, also taking the clockwise moment as the positive moment, we have positive 10 times 6 times 3 minus RBY times 6 equals to 0. Solving for the value of RBY, the result is equal to 30 kN. To check, we'll use the summation of forces along Y, which should be equal to 0. And this time, we'll take the upward forces as the positive force. We have RAY plus RBY minus 10 times 6 equals to 0. Substituting the value we solve for RAY and RBY, we have the result 0. 0 is indeed equal to 0, therefore our answer for RAY and RBY is indeed correct. 
Now using the free body diagram for member AC and BC, let us solve for RAX and RBX respectively. Summing the moment at point C, which should also be equal to zero, taking the clockwise moment as the positive moment, we have positive RAY times 3 minus RAX times 3 minus 10 times 3 times 1.5 equals to zero. Now substituting the value of RAY and solving for the value of RAX, we will have the result equal to 15 kN. RAX is equal to 15 kN. Using the free body diagram for member BC, we'll sum the moment at point C, which should also be equal to 0 and taking the clockwise moment as the positive moment. We have 10 times 3 times 1.5 plus RBX times 3 minus RBY times 3 equals to 0. Substituting the value of RBY, which is 30 kN, and solving for the value of RBX, we have the result equal to 15 kN. Now to check, we can use the free body diagram for the whole structure. We will sum the forces along X and it should be equal to 0. We will take the forces directed to the right as the positive force and we have RAX minus RBX equals to 0. 15 kN minus 15 kN is indeed equal to 0 and 0 is indeed equal to 0. Therefore, our answer for RAX and RBX is indeed correct. Using the free body diagram for member AC, let us solve for RCX and RCY. Summation of forces along X is equal to 0. We'll take forces directed to the right as the positive forces. We have RAX plus RCX equals to 0. Substituting the value of RAX which is equal to 15 kN, and solving for the value of RCX, we'll get the value equal to negative 15 kN. Now take note with a negative sign. It does not necessarily mean that your answer is wrong. It just means that we made an error in our assumption with the direction of the reaction forces. And we can easily correct this error by simply changing the direction of the reaction. And the magnitude remains the same. So RCX is equal to 15 kN. Now solving for the value of RCY, We'll use the summation of forces along y equals to 0. Now we'll take the upward forces as the positive forces. We have RAY plus RCY minus 10 times 3 equals to 0. Substituting the value of RAY, which is equal to 30 kN, and solving for the value of RCY, we'll get the result equal to 0. Now to check, let us try to solve again, but this time, we'll use the free body diagram for member BC. Using summation of forces along x equals to 0, we have negative RCX minus RBX equals to 0. Substituting the value of RBX, which is equal to 15 kN, and solving for the value of RCX, we'll get the result equal to negative 15 kN. We have a negative result, meaning we need to change our assumed direction in the free body diagram for member BC. And if we try to compare it with the free body diagram for member AC, we can see that Newton's third of motion still governs. So RCX is equal to 15 kN. Now to check for RCY, we'll sum the forces along y-axis and it should be equal to 0. We have RBY plus RCY minus 10 times 3 equals to 0. Substituting the value of RBY, which is equal to 30 kN, and solving for the value of RCY, we'll get the result equal to 0. Now we can see that the results are the same. Therefore, RCX and RCY are indeed equal to 15 kN and 0 kN respectively. So these are the reactions at the hinges of this 3 hinge R. The last thing we need to do is to plug in these values to our free body diagram like this. And we'll have these as our answer.